Welcome to Electra Online, and now we're going to see how to use the oxidation numbers to balance equations. Now, here I have an example of an equation that you can easily balance without using oxidation numbers. Here we have sodium, we're mixing with chlorine gas, we get sodium chloride. So the first thing you do is you come over here and you say, well, I have chlorine gas, which is a diatomic molecule. That means on the right side, I also need two chlorine molecules, uh, chlorine atoms. So I put a two in front, so now that chlorine and chlorine on the left side is balanced with chlorine on the right side. But now we have two sodium atoms on the right side, which means we need two sodium atoms on the left side, so we put a two in front, and the equation is balanced. Pretty easy. But how would you do that when you have an equation that looks like this? It's a little bit more difficult, and therefore, sometimes using the oxidation numbers makes it really, well, a lot easy. It's kind of like an ironclad case. It, it makes it easy to get the correct answer, and that's what's important here. So, how do we do that? Well, first you write down the basic equation. So we're adding sulfur to nitric acid to get sulfur dioxide and nitric oxide. All right, so how is that equation balanced using oxidation numbers? The first thing you do is you assign oxidation numbers and determine which of the elements have been reduced and which have been oxidized. So here we have sulfur that is in the oxidation state zero. Here we have hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxi oxygen. Now typically oxygen will be at a negative two. Hydrogen will be a plus one. That would be minus six plus one that leaves you with a plus five for nitrogen. So that's the most likely state and that's what it is for nitric acid. Here we have sulfur dioxide. Since oxygen typically is minus two and there's two oxygen atoms, that means that the sulfur here will be a plus four. And here we have nitric oxide. Oxygen will typically be about minus two. That means the nitrogen here will have to be plus two. All right, so now let's see, based upon this, based on the oxidation numbers, which of the elements have been oxidized and which of them have been reduced. So you see sulfur goes from zero to plus four. So sulfur is oxidized. And here we have nitrogen from plus five to plus two. So nitrogen has been reduced. Okay, so step one is done. We wrote the basic equation. Step two is done. We determine all the oxidation numbers and which element has been reduced and which element has been oxidized. Now the next step is we're going to equalize the oxidation numbers. So to do that, we indicate that for sulfur, sulfur went from zero to a plus four state. So that means it was oxidized and so we have a plus four for sulfur. That is the change, so the delta is equal to plus four. Nitrogen went from five to plus two, so that was reduced. So we went from a plus five to a plus two, so the delta here is a minus three, and that was the case for nitrogen. So here you determine which was reduced and which was oxidized, and you determine how much of a change. For sulfur, it was from zero to four, so it's an oxidation increase, plus four. And here we have five, it went to plus two, so that was an oxidation decrease or a reduction of minus three. So now you want to equalize the oxidation numbers. So for the equation to be balanced, the oxidation deltas have to be balanced as well. So what do we mean by that? Well, here we have a delta of minus four, and here we have a delta, oh, not minus four, plus plus four, and a delta of minus three. So we want them to be balanced, which means we want the positive or the increase in oxidation number to be the same as the decrease in oxidation number, which means if we multiply this one by three, and we multiply this one by four, this gives us a positive 12, this gives a minus 12, when we add them together we add zero, so that's what makes them balanced. Which means the element that had an oxidation number increase of plus four, I have to multiply that by three, I need three of those, and the element that has an oxidation reduction or a reduction of minus three, I need four of those because four times minus three gives me 12 as well. So that's how you determine what number to place in front so that the equation will balance via the oxidation number. So let me show you in just a moment what I meant with that. So which element had an increase of plus four? It was sulfur, which means sulfur will need a three in front of it to balance the oxidation numbers. And which element had a 
a reduction of minus 3, that was nitrogen, which means that nitrogen will have to have a 4 in front of it in order to balance the equation for oxidation numbers. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll write the equation down. Actually, I have the equation up here, so I can come up here and say, all right, sulfur needs a 3 in front of it, so I'll go ahead and put the 3 right in front there. And uh, nitrogen needs a 4 in front of it, so I put a 4 in front of that. So now I can go ahead and balance it. Here I have three sulfurs. I need three sulfurs over there. So put a three in front. And here I have four nitrogens. I need four nitrogens over there. So I put a four in front of that. So at least the sulfur and the nitrogen are both balanced now by using these numbers right here and by balancing the equation just for sulfur and nitrogen. Now the last step is to go ahead and balance the remainder of the equation by adding hydrogen ions water or hydroxide ions to the left side or the right side of the equation to balance things out. So let's see what we have here. On the left side we have four hydrogens and we have a total of 12 oxygens. So let's write that down. So here we have, maybe I'll write it over here. I have four hydrogens on the left side and 12 oxygens on the left side. So four times three is 12 oxygens, four times one is four hydrogens. On the right side of the equation what do I have? I have zero hydrogens. That means I'm going to have, to have to add at least four hydrogens on the right side. And how many oxygens do I have? Three times two is six. Four times one is four. Six plus four is ten. I have ten oxygens on the right side. So that means I need two more oxygens and four more hydrogens on the right side to balance things out. So that means I need plus four hydrogens and plus two oxygens. Well, it turns out two oxygens and four hydrogens make two water molecules. In other words, what I need to add on the right side is plus two H2Os, and now I should have the whole equation balanced. So the final step then, they say, once you think you have the right equation, now let's go ahead and verify by all the numbers are being correct. So in other words, I want to check the the number of elements, and I want to check the oxidation states to make sure they all add up. So three sulfurs have three sulfurs. Four nitrogens, I have four nitrogens. Oxygens, I have four times three, I have 12. Here I have six, plus four is 10, plus two is 12, so oxygen is balanced. I have four hydrogens, and I have four hydrogens, so the, at least that is balanced. Now let's make sure that all the oxidation states are balanced as well. So I have zero, 1, 5, minus 2. On the right side, I have a 4, a minus 2, a plus 2, a minus 2. And of course, for the oxygen, right here, we would have a minus 2. And for hydrogen, I have a plus 1. So now let's see if the oxidation numbers are balanced as well. So on the left side, let's add up all the oxidation numbers. I have 4 times plus 1. That would be a plus 4. I have 4 times nitrogen, but it's uh, has oxidation plus 5, so 4 times plus 5 is plus 20. And we have 3 oxygens. 4 times 3 is 12 times minus 2 is minus 24. All right? So on the left side of the equation, my oxidation numbers are 4 plus 20 is 24, minus 24 is 0. So I have 0 when I add up all the oxidation numbers on the left side of the equation. Now let me do it on the right side of the equation have three sulfurs, they have oxidation state of 4, so 3 times plus 4 is plus 12. I have two oxygens here times 3, that's 6 oxygens, times a minus 2, that's minus 12. Here I have four nitrogens, they're at oxidation state of plus 2, that would be plus 8. Here I have four oxygens with oxidation state of minus 2, 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. Here I have two hydrogens times two, that's four hydrogens with an oxidation state of plus one, that's plus four. And I have two oxygens with the oxidation state of minus two, two times minus two is minus four. And notice when I add all those up together, I also get zero, zero equals zero. That means not only are the elements balanced, all the oxidation numbers are balanced, and I'm positive now that this is the correct way to balance that particular equation. So that's how we use oxidation numbers to balance equations especially for something that's this complicated, notice that we would not have known to add hydrogen or 
or oxygen, I mean hydrogen or water or hydroxide ions, unless we win the head, unless we win the head and use this particular method, which we call the oxidation number method. And that should be an O, <laughs> method uh, of balancing equations. So there's a nice little example. If you're not quite sure what I just did, stay tuned. I'll show you several more examples of how to go ahead and use the oxidation number to balance equations.